In this video, we will add implementation of the request password reset to our service layer. And for that, I will go to my service package. And there I have user service interface. And I will add one more method, which will return a Boolean value and it will be called request password reset. And this method will take in string email address. Okay, so now let's go to a user service implementation class and add an implemented methods. The method will be added at the bottom. So I will scroll down and here it is. I'll just remove this to do. And as my first step, I will declare a return value, which I will then return instead of this hard coded false value. And the second step, I will take this uh, user email and then I will use existing user repository to find a record in my database that matches this email address. And I want to do it because I want to make sure that this user does exist in our database. It's not a non-existing email address. So if record is not found, I will then return false and the rest of the code will not be executed. But if this user does exist in our database, then I can continue working with it and I can send them an email message with the password reset link. So my next step will be to generate the password reset token. And I will use utility class. And later in the following video, we will create a function that generates the password reset token. And that password reset token will contain user ID in its payload. But we will talk more about it uh, in a later video. So let's assume that we now have a generated token. And the next step for us will be to take this token and to store it in our database and to associate that token with a user ID. And we will do that by creating a new um, password reset token entity. We don't have this entity yet, so we are going to create it. We will create a new entity class and we will set the token so that the token can be persisted in the database. And we will set user details there as well so that this token can be associated with uh, this particular user. And finally, we will use the password reset token repository, which at this moment we also do not have, but we are going to create it to save and persist this password reset token entity in our database. And once password is saved in our database, we can send the email message to this user. And we will do that by using Amazon simple email service. We do have this class created already. And if you did not watch videos from the previous section where we have implemented email verification functionality, please do watch that because the very first set of videos in that section is about how to configure Amazon simple email service and how to whitelist your email address so that you can use it to send email messages to your users using that email address in a from field. So we'll add a new function to this Amazon simple email service class, which will be called send password reset request. And that function will accept user first name so that we can greet user by their first name. Hi, Sergey, for example, someone has requested a password reset. And if it were not you, please ignore this message. Otherwise, please click on the link below. This function will also need to accept email address and this email address belongs to the user. So Amazon simple email service needs to know whom we are sending this email message. And finally token, which will be appended to the link as a URL query request parameter. And we need it there so that when the link is clicked, we can extract that token and verify it. Okay, so the result of this send password reset request function will be returned back as a Boolean value and we will return it back to the REST controller. If email message was successfully sent, then the return value will be set to true, otherwise set to false. Okay, so now let's go step by step and first generate the password reset token. 